So one might ask, whose problem this is? Is this the problem of a particular faith? Is it the problem of Islam? Is it the problem of, it, of Judaism, of Christianity? In the time of post-11, there's a lot of fear and a lot of misunderstanding. And for those of us who are not Muslim, we know that that kind of fear and misunderstanding emerges at, at times of stress uh, and has emerged in the past. And sometimes it's been directed at this religious group and sometimes at that religious group. Um, so it's real, really important in time of stress to, for people to understand we're all in this together. I think growing up, faith for me was a zero-sum game. That my faith could not exist and be the truth, while other faiths could exist and be the truth. And zero-sum games just aren't possible in interfaith work. And when you learn the stories of other people, you realize that multiple truths exist at once, and multiple truths enrich each other. We know that the prophet uh, was so concerned about the issue of race that he addressed it in his last sermon where he said there's no superiority of the Arab over the non-Arab, black over the white. And he talked about treating people with equity. Jesus told his disciples, he who wishes to be chief amongst you shall first be your servant. So that tells me treating people fairly and having a servant mindset is the key to success. Many of my Muslim friends, including imams who are good friends of mine, say that, that the United States of America is the best place to be a Muslim in the world that the freedom of religion we have here enables you to develop your, uh, your Muslim identity uh, uh, proudly. Uh, and there's no place, there's no place in, in Muslim majority countries where Islam is as free to develop as it is in, in this country. The burden is not on you to convince other people to change their views. That's a, there's a very fine line, right? You have no control over what people think. The only thing you have control over is you and what you do and how you interact with them. The prophetic tradition and the prophetic narration that my companions are stars and you've been guided by each and every one of them is just one example of why it is important that Muslims themselves must be an example in every aspect of their life. It's a high standard to live up to recognizing we will fall short. But those standards are ones in which one can strive for every day. The particular of the 9-11, the uh, terrorists, the, those perpetrating the violence weren't targeting one particular group, they were targeting America. And we are all Americans. There were Muslims who died at, uh, on that date and, and they died for no reason whatsoever. They were as innocent as everybody else. I think what's key is, is, is to know and be in relationship with the other, someone that's different from you. I believe Islam teaches us that with the verse in the Quran that says, I created you for what? To get to know one another. I created you of different nations, ethnicities, tribes, however you may translate it, but for what? To get to know one another. And so I think that's the mandate um, actually for Muslims especially in the world right now.